I want to um, take you through some brief divination processes, both going into the past and going into the future as examples, so you get a sense of that. But, uh, and so, and to start off with, I'd like us to focus on what I'm calling the present world. And um, I'm going to ask you to do some drawing as part of it. Let me explain it first. But if you have some piece of paper and some drawing, you'll find that this is very helpful. So this can be called uh, various names. It's the present. Our present world, I could call it the, the field of our present awareness. What I'm presently aware of. Uh, the field of my present identity. What I think of... Uh, this is me. This is, and traditional people would say, this is, you know, we, we each live in a world. A world of what? A world of relations. And this is where it ties into what I call a systems view or a relational view, which I talked about on my talk on Saturday too. That um, the, uh, so you can call this, another way of ca calling this is to call it the self system. It's the system of the relations that we have with other beings. And we all, the system's view says, that's what we are. We are relational beings. It's not that we are individuals that have relationships or could not have them. <laughs> Sometimes people think that way, you know, they say, oh, I have no relations. <laughs> I don't have any relationships. Meaning that they have relationships, but they don't like the ones they have. <laughs> Basically, is what that means. You know, I can prove to you that you can't be otherwise than relational. Each one of us is the son or daughter of a mother and a father. That's p pretty core to your essence, wouldn't you say? Um, and you couldn't be apart from that. <laughs> and that's a relation. You may also be mother, brother or sister. And you may also be mother or father in turn, also, also a relationship. You may also be with a partner or a spouse or husband or wife uh, and friendships, colleagues. You may be an employer or an employee or a colleague, peer, all relations. I don't think there's anything that we are that's not relational. And that involves a complete shift in our thinking. You know, as Americans particularly, we're, conditioned to think we're individuals, self-autonomous beings. <laughs> but we're always relational. And, and, and feminist thinkers have pointed this out very clearly, and systems thinkers. We're relational in our essence. So this present world is the system of all our relations. We have relations with beings, human beings, and non-human beings, like animals and spirits and trees, and groups, and also places. And this is an important part of an indigenous worldview that's not really normally considered important in a, in a modern worldview. But we, we're all related to a place. We come from a certain place. We live in a certain place that we call home. We have a relation to that place. And then we have places that we visit. And then we have, maybe have places that have a particular charge for us. Like for some people, it's being by the ocean or being in a forest or being in the mountains or places that induce visions or creativity and things like that. So this, you can think of this then as the system of relations to beings and places. So... Let me ask you then to do just this, to just, to, and I'll say some more about it after we've done that, but then uh, just close your eyes for a moment and think about and draw a mental circle around the network, the system of relations to beings, human and non-human, and places that constitute your world. And you just have that set and immediately the significant beings and places in your world will sort of pop up into your mind. You don't need to really go searching for them very long. You just have that set and they'll immediately pop up into your mind. Then 
just sketch a circle on a piece of paper and, and draw, indicate them, draw them in, like do, you know, draw, draw the names of the people. You can put yourself, your, your body, your present body where you're sitting right here in the middle. And then the beings and the places that are close to you, some people might do a little symbol or write the name, or, and you'll find yourself automatically drawing the people that are closer to you, closer to your central bar, you know, and those that are more remote or marginal further, and you know, mother and father will be there somewhere, children, and you know, like that. Just sketch them and um, um, just to get a sense. Of course, they're not literally in a circle, but you're making a mental circle around them. That's your present world. That's the world. That's your world. And the boundary is given by the name. The beings that you know, that you relate with, you know their name. And they know your name. And so the place, same with the places. Of course, there are other human beings that you might interact with occasionally from time to time, like the grocery store clerk or the gas station attendant whose name you don't know. And they're human beings, of course, and you treat them with total respect, but you don't have the same kind of relationships with them. And then there are some beings whose name you know, like George Bush, but you don't necessarily have a relationship with them. But I think you get the idea that the relation is, the name is sort of the criterion the boundary, it's not a closed boundary, it can change all the time, you know, you're always meeting new people and uh, including them then in your larger circle of network of people. Dave, beg your pardon? I'm sorry, I can't understand it. Uh, yeah. It's just a model. No, there's no absolute truth about this. This is the way of thinking about it. Okay, so now four important attributes of this present world that I want to point out to you. This is the place where you have choice. You don't have choice about your past, but you have choice about how in your present you look at your past. And that's, that's actually the process of psychotherapy. You don't also have choice about your future, but you do have choices about what you do in the present that may or may not bring about a certain future. <laughs> you know, if you think of the future as being these pathways, then you don't know exactly where it's going to end up. That would be prediction. But you know that you could choose the next step that you're going to take. So that means that this is also um, the place where you can take responsibility in the now. But because you, you can't take responsibility for what happened in the past. You can take responsibility for how you regard that. You're always doing that in the present. When you say, well, I take responsibility for that, for example, if I've done something to harm somebody else, I, can take, I can't alter the fact that, it's, that I did that. <laughs> but I can take responsibility for it in the present which would determine then the relationship in the present and from then on into the future about that. Responsibility means ability to respond. Right? So um, these four terms are really ways of saying the same thing. And it's, there's a book called The Power of Now. You may have heard, read, read that. You know. There's also Ram Dass's book, Be Here Now. You know, some people say all there really is is the now. You know, forget about the past or the future. Just focus on the now. And there's some truth to that. But it's also true <laughs> that we're related to the past and the future. So this, therefore, means that this is also the place of power. And it's the place of freedom because we have the freedom to choose and the power to choose. And the Buddhists have a wonderful saying that encapsulates um, this whole idea, this whole model, which I only discovered after I um, d created the model or evolved the model. And the saying goes like this. Um, If you want to know the past, look to your present conditions. 
That's a statement of the law of karma. Your present conditions that you're li living in is a function of your past. And if you want to know your future, look to your present actions. That's also stating the law of karma, or it's also stating um, truth, like in the proverb, as you sow, so shall you reap. You know, it's the idea that what you sow now is what you will reap <laughs> in the future. The bed you make now will be the bed that you sleep in. Those kinds of ideas.